chapter 35. Real familiar scripture. Jeremiah chapter 35, start about verse 13. We'll start about verse 12. Because then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will you not receive instructions to hearken to my words? Saith the Lord, The words of Jonadab, the son of Rahab, child, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine or perform, for unto this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandment. Notwithstanding, I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but you hearken not unto me. I have sent also unto you all my servants the prophets, rising up early, and sending them, saying, Return ye now, every man, from his evil way, and amend your doings, and go not after other gods to serve them, and ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers, but you have not inclined your ear nor hearken unto me, because the sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, had performed the commandments of their father, which he commanded them, but this people has not hearkened unto me. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will bring upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken unto them, but they have not heard. And I have called unto them, they have not answered. Let's bow our heads. My Heavenly Father, God, so thankful, Lord, to be in your house today. Lord, ask you to forgive me, Lord, of my sins and many shortcomings. And Lord, help us preach your word today, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be able to be an encouragement, Lord. Help us to lift up, Lord, not to tear down. Help us, Lord, to just preach your word the way you have us to preach it. And it accomplish exactly what you have us to do. That's the same to Jesus Christ. Holy name. Amen. Amen. And I thought tonight, for a text tonight, will you not receive instructions to hearken to my words? Saith the Lord. Yeah, I didn't come here tonight to tell you what I say. It don't matter what I say. It don't matter what I think. It matters what says the word of God. I, I came tonight, I told you, you know, I said, if you got the King James Version, you will read like mine. I didn't say I come here in the book of Matt Smith. I come here tonight to preach you tonight the Word of God, the Word that God gave unto me. I'm going to do my best to give it to you today. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know your heart today. But I tell you, who knows? You know where you stand. Amen. And God knows where you stand. And all the devil knows where you stand. Because I tell you what, if he's working on you, he don't have you. Whenever a devil quits working on you, that's when you better work. Because that's when he's got you right exactly where he wants you. But will you not receive instructions to hearken to my words, saith the Lord? I tell you what, he's given us instructions. And I looked that up. It's a direction or order. Instruction. Detailed information telling how something should be done, operated, or assembled. He said, assemble yourselves in the house of the Lord. Like I said, I didn't come here to preach myself tonight. He gave us detailed information right here at our fingertips. We have no excuse. Whatever excuse you want to bring up, I'm sure you got, uh, everybody's got excuses, but I tell you what, one day we won't be without excuses. We got to make God number one because he won't come second to nothing. I tell you what, you got to make up your mind Joshua says, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And if you love the Lord, he said, you'll keep my commandments. And I believe if you love the Lord, you're going to want to know more about me. 
Yeah. How are you going to know more about it if you don't open the book? You've got to open it up and read it, study it. I tell you what, hearken unto his instruction. Tell you what, will you not receive them? You know, I've said it before when I, I've got things to put together for, and I didn't read the instructions. I'd have all these bolts left. And I found out I needed them bolts. Because you put something together without the instructions, and you got all these extra bolts, you think, wow, they must have made a mistake. They gave me all these extra bolts. I better use them for something else. And then when whatever you put together falls apart, then you get the instructions of it. And then you put it together the way the manufacturer said to put it together. And then it'll sing. So I tell you what, if we'll put our lives together according to the manufacturer, the one who created us, I tell you what, we can have a life and we can have it more abundantly. I tell you what, if we don't just hearken under His instructions, life can be a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. I've tried to do things on my own before. And I tell you what, like Brother Earl said, you can make a mess out of that. Yeah. Then your back's against the wall. <laughs> and that's when I found out God does his best work. Yeah. When I done realize I done everything I can do and I just made things worse, once I can accept that and let God take over. You know, we talked this morning, you know, a lot of times you know, we'll pray. Well, I'm talking about myself, I'll pray. And I'll ask God for this, or I'll ask God for that, or ask God, let me do this or that or whatever. But see, I want to do all the talking, and I don't want to do the listening. We need to listen. We need to stand still and listen for the Lord's direction. See what direction He wants us to go. See what He that what He'll have us to do. I'm talking tonight about will you not receive instructions? To hearken to my words, saith the Lord. And over in Matthew, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If we will just come to Jesus, He will give us rest. When we do all we can do, I tell you what, when we live our life the way we think we ought to live it, and we find out that it's a rough life, if we will just come unto Jesus according to the Word of God, if we'll just come to Him, He will give us rest. I can remember when I was lost, I laid my head down on that pillow, knowing I was going to split hell wide open if I liked this world like that. And I didn't sleep very right well. But when I gave my heart to Jesus, I can sleep. I can lay my head down and not worry about it. I can remember going in and for a surgery, they said, well, you know, there's no guarantee that you'll wake up. I said, oh, I'll wake up. You don't know that. I said, I'm going to wear either way. I'm going to wake up on this side, or I'm going to wake up on the other side. Either way, the victory is mine. All because I have hearkened unto his instructions. He loves us. That's why he gave us instructions. So that we could go to heaven. We couldn't get there on our own. You know, I, there's people who says, well, you know what? If that person didn't make it to heaven, nobody's going. Was he born again? What's that got to do with it? Everything. Amen. If you want to go, you must be born again. Yeah. Yeah. We not hearken to his instructions. That's the word of God. You must be born again. He didn't say it's a good idea to be born again. He said you must be born again. If you want to go to heaven, you can. You know, God, He looks, He looks at sin a little bit different than what we look at it. You know, a lot of people say, 
says, well, that little sin there ain't going to hurt nothing. You know how many sins are in the heaven? Zero. No little white lie is entering into heaven. No sin at all is going to enter in. God sent the best that he had. He sent Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, to pay our sin debt so that we can go to heaven. What, I tell you what we got to do. We got to receive his instructions. We must be born again. We must have our names written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. My name's on the books here. My name's on the conference roll. They'll have that conference roll. And they'll start calling out our names here. Oh, that's really good. But if your name's not in the Lamb's Book of Life, Amen. None of that's going to matter now. That's what matters. All I know is when he calls my name. Here. Right. When the roll is called up young, I'll be there. I'll be there. I can't wait. Heaven's a real place. And everybody up there hearken under his instructions. We got instructions. We got to follow them. They're not hard to follow. The way of a transgressor is hard. The Lord's way is not hard. Amen. You know, we might, we, people, you know, makes it hard, but it ain't hard. The trust in God is not hard. I tell you, it ain't hard for me. I don't know. Maybe it's hard for some other folks, but I tell you what, when I realized that I was lost, that's the first thing you've got to realize. Amen. That you're lost. Amen. Some people just don't realize they're lost. And Brother Rick always says, in order to get somebody saved, you, you have to get them lost. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You got to know where you're at. See, when I was lost, I didn't I didn't need nobody tell me I was lost. I already knew I was. Because I grew up right here in this church. And I've heard a lot of different preachers preach. I've heard Brother Patterson preach. I've heard a, I've heard a, one, one of the preachers, a wise little, I think his name was, uh, his last name was Frame. I think he was right before Brother Patterson, I think. And Brother Rick. I say Brother Bob Thompson. Yeah. Brother Wade. Webb. A lot of different preachers. And I knew exactly where I was at. I was lost. But I'm glad I hearkened under his instructions. Yeah. And I tell you what, he's here in the house tonight. Yes, tell you what, he's worthy of all praise. All we got to do is hearken under him. And I tell you what, another instruction is we need to hearken to. It's forsake not or assemble ourselves in the house of the Lord. That's not a good idea. He says, forsake not. He didn't say, just come whenever you feel like it. Yeah. Or just come whenever you, whenever you're nothing on TV. Yeah. Or when you ain't got nothing to do. Or when the weather's bad. He says, forsake not, assemble yourself in the house of God. Amen. It's not for the Lord. It's for us. To help each other. You might have the very words that I need. I may have the very testimony that you need. We're here to help each other. Because I tell you what, we got to make it. We don't know. I told them not to work. I said, they said this person said that or this person done this. I said one thing about it is, you don't know what that person's going through. You don't know what kind of life they live. They may, they may say something you don't like, but the Lord showed me one day, you don't know their heart. You don't know what they might be going through. They might have a family member buried to die. They may have someone just passed away. You don't know. They might have just been told they got cancer. You don't know what's going on in their life. So I tell you what we need to do. We just need it. Pray for them. And the Lord will take over. Amen. See, a lot of times, places where I work, 
They don't want to hear anything about prayer. But I far from them to his instructions. They would come up under me at work. I had to have a meeting out there every morning. They would come to me and say, hey, uh, this person I know is bad on cancer, getting ready to pass away. Do you think we can have prayer? I said, I, yes, we can. And I get up and I tell them, I said, we're going to have prayer. And if anybody in here does not, don't believe in prayer, or if they offend you that we're going to pray, pray, you can go ahead and leave. Cover my breath. And wait to pray. That's just a door that the Lord opened up. We have super fighters come in there as we friend. Never said a word to me. Because it wouldn't do them no good. Because I've heard from unto the Lord. The Lord is the one that opens that door up. And I, if I wasn't afraid, I would have taken a beating for that. Yeah. I would have, you know, I, I said before, I would have had a trip to the woodshed over that. Because I tell you what, I, I've done that before, not knowing what the Lord would have me do, and I pay a price for it. Mm. So I try to live my life when the Lord directs me to do something, yeah. to say something, to go somewhere, to whatever, I'm going to look to the best of my mind. People may not like it, but it don't matter what you like or what you dislike. What matters is, What's he like? Because mm -hmm. whatever we do, we're supposed to do it as we're doing it unto the Lord. Right. When I preach, I'm preaching as I'm preaching unto the Lord. You know, people might say, well, I don't like your preaching. I don't care if you don't like it or not. I mean, I wish you would like it, but you didn't call me. Amen. The Lord called me. Yeah. Amen. I remember when the Lord called me, I told Brother Rick, I said, Lord, Rick, I said, uh, Brother, I think the Lord wants me to pray. He's all just don't worry about it right now. He said, this go on and on. And it's pray about it. So I, I come back. I think he wants me to preach. Just go on and on. Don't worry about it. Then I come back and said, the Lord wants me to preach. And he'll say, I'm not with you <laughs> And that's how it happened. Yeah. That's when I started preaching. Amen. The Lord called me. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have to ask him about it. I knew he was calling me into the ministry. I didn't know why, because there's so many other people that I thought was more worthy to be called into it. But I hearkened unto his instructions. He said, I want you to preach. My gospel. And I'm doing the best I can. I'm going to hearken unto him. I'm going to do what the Lord will have me to do. That's the best I can. We got the best teachers around in this room right now tonight. You know what they do? They do the best they can for the Lord. Amen. That's what it's all about. Whatever you do, when you go to Walmart, and you're sitting there talking to somebody about the Lord because you're hearkening unto Him today and you're letting people know about Jesus Christ, you're going up like unto Him. Because He is the one that you're doing for. Yeah. We're not doing it for ourselves. You know, I know I can remember we used to go out to the person's homes. I'd go out there hoping, you know, my intention was to go out there to bring us mine. Somebody's face. And I go out there, I would get more of a blessing Amen. than they would. They would bring me up, lift me up. And I tell you what, that's how the Lord works. Will this heart for them again? Life is good. Everything is good. If we'll just come on to Him, He will give us rest. It says right over here in Matthew, it says, Then said Jesus to the disciples, If any man will come after me, 
Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Yeah. Amen. That's his instructions. That's that in the red letters. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. The Lord didn't say take up my cross. Yeah. I can't take up your cross. We got a cross we got here. Yeah. I remember reading a story one time about this man had this cross. And he told the Lord, he said, Lord, this cross is just too big. It's too much. He said, well, just set it over in the corner. And we'll get you another cross. So they put it up there and they looked and see all these room full of crosses, big crosses. And they come right around there and saw this real little cross in the corner. I'll take that cross. Is that the one you lay down? <laughs> so we want to think we're carrying a big cross. We're not carrying nothing compared to what our Lord and Savior carried. Yeah. He went all the way. Amen. And I tell you what all he is saying, take up your cross and follow him. That's all we gotta do. He he picked up his cross and went all the way to Calvary, beat half to death, and laid in Christ's hands down on that cross and let him drive their spikes in his hands and in his feet and lifted them up between the heaven and the earth. That was his cross. All he's asking us to do is take up our cross. Let somebody make fun of you. Let somebody not wave at you. And don't quit church because somebody didn't shake your hand. Jesus paid a great cross that we can have this salvation. But I tell you what, we, you know the Bible says eyes ain't seen it, ears ain't heard it, neither has it entered in the heart of man the praise that God has got prepared for those who love him. That's in the word. But you know what? I can't even comprehend the price that he paid. Amen. That we can have this salvation. Amen. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah says that he was more beyond recognition. I tell you what, he, he was he was beaten half to death. Most people would have died for the beating that he could, but his love was greater than any other thing. He went all the way so that we can have this salvation. He hearkened unto the instructions. Of the Father. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They went no other way. Jesus said, There's another way, let us cut pass. Yeah. He says, But not my will, but thy will be done. Mm -hmm. That's how we need to live our life. Not our will, his will. Yeah. Get ourselves out of the way. Yeah. I know it's hard to do sometimes, but we can just. Think what the Lord has done for each and every one of us when things come up, when death enters in our home, just remember what the Lord has done for each and every one of us. And what I tell you what, if it wasn't for him, we couldn't make it. But because of him, we can make it. And we gotta make it. Even when we get down, I mean, I, I'll get down a lot, quite a bit. I'll get down now, pressed. But it's always somebody who's got a word of encouragement that helps you. Yeah. That lifts you back up yeah. and gets you out of the pit. Get your feet back on the rock. Your feet's always on the rock, but sometimes it seems like, well, let's sink down. Devil come to me. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I tell you what, that's why I like reading the word of God, because I tell you what, he will see us through whatever comes our way. It also says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake 
shall find it. For what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man exchange his soul for? If he had all the money in the world, he wouldn't be a lick of it. Our soul is precious. If money could buy our salvation, <laughs> Jesus wouldn't have died for us. But because he gave his life, he paid a great price. That's how much God loves us. I want the Lord to know that I love you. He's been good to me. He's been good to you all. Man. I remember hearing our great brother wait and say, I think the Lord's been better to me than anybody. I think any Christian should be able to say that. Because yeah. he has. Amen. It's a personal relationship. We need to receive the instructions. And hearken under his words. I tell you, we're without excuse. Remember Matthew said Jesus came to them saying, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. He didn't say it's a good idea. That's his instructions. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I tell you, I believe that is a, I believe that's a commandment. When he said go, we need to go. When he says don't go, we don't need to go. But when he opens the door up and says go, we need our feet. My feet needs to be walking in that direction. Yep. Doing what he will have me do. Amen. Because I tell you, when we get to heaven, we're not going to have no sad story. We're not going to have no regrets. I tell you, when we get there, I don't think that Goes on down here in this little world. I don't think we'll even remember. Amen. Because there's no tears in heaven. Yeah. No pain, no sorrow. All the former things is cast away. All things become new. Yeah. We're going to be in a new city, the new Jerusalem. There's a new heaven, a new earth, because the former earth is passed away with a permanent heat. This old world has got our home. We're just passing through. It's up to us where we go. It's up to us if we go to heaven. It's on us. It's God's will that none perish. That all come to repentance. David said, I hold my soul continuously in my hands. It's up to me whether I go to heaven or not. Guess what? I'm going to heaven. I done made up my mind. I'm going. My name's in the book. Amen. When he calls my name, like Brother Scott says, I'm out of here. Tell you what, we got more to go to heaven for today, like that song said, than we had yesterday. Amen. He's worried. He says, Where is your treasure at? That's where your heart is. There's your traitors in heaven. That's where we need to put our traitors. That's why we go out here. In the highways, in the byways, when we see somebody, a brother will talk about somebody he was working for, and we tell them about Jesus. That's a treasure that we want put up in heaven. We want to take this as many people with us as we possibly can. I got lost loved ones. I want to see them get saved. I got lost neighbors. I want to see them get right. I want to see everybody go to heaven. There's nobody I want to see die and go to hell. 
And I was thinking, we need to hearken, receive his instructions. And the man, you know, we talk about that crazy man, my friend. I say, man, him and Buddy Buddies. He was crazy. Living in the tombs. Jesus said one day, we're going to the other side. He had a mission. He was going over there to that man that was living in them tombs that nobody wanted anything to do with because he was crazy. For the devil, that's what the devil can do for you. He can make you crazy. Amen. Right. And when he got over there, Jesus cast him devils out of him into that herd of swine. And that herd of swine ran down, finally down over the bank into the water and drowned himself. We talked the other night about receiving instructions, Parker to his words. What I wanted to get at was that when Jesus was coming to the ship, he that was possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. He wanted to go with Jesus. And I don't blame him. He know he's seen that love, that compassion. Nobody else could do anything for him. Nobody else could probably, I don't know, maybe they wouldn't try. I don't know. I wasn't there. But I know Jesus showed compassion on him. He, he wanted to go home with him. Jesus said, Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, go home. And when he said go home, he wasn't saying go back that tomb. Go back to your home. To your friends. And tell them how great things the Lord has done for you and have compassion on you. That's what the Lord expects out of me. That's what the Lord expects out of you. We can't go with Him right now, but we need to be ready when He calls us out of this world or if we get to go in a rapture. But until then, we need to go home and we need to tell our friends and our family about the compassion and about the love of Jesus Christ. Just like our brother here that lived in the tomb, Jesus said, go home. And tell your friends and your family about the compassion. That's what we need to do. That's the only way we're going to get the loss to Jesus. Show them. You know, talk is cheap. We can tell somebody we love them, but until we show them, they're not going to know. Them. And I've said before, my uncle Bill, he said a lot of things that I couldn't say up here, but some things I could say. He was talking to that guy one time. The guy told him, he says, Jesus loves you. And my uncle said, I know Jesus loves me, but do you? That's what we need to show the world that we love. That, you know, people that live in sin. I've been called narrow minded, bigot. I've been called everything. But I still love them. Because I'm not going to compromise the world. If I would compromise the word of God, you don't love them. Amen. If you don't tell them the truth. Amen. You've got somebody on the back that's living in sin, oh, you're okay, you're all right, and when they die, they go straight to hell. That's not love. That's hate, if you ask me. We need to listen to his instruction. He said, go home and tell your friends and family about the compassion that the Lord has done for you. Sometimes I believe when we're saved for a very long time, sometimes I think we forget that compassion. Because we live a Christian life for a few years, 
I think sometimes we forget what it felt like when that burden left the off. Amen. I'll never forget that. When that burden left it off, I felt like I could just take it right off to heaven. I just felt light. I felt never felt like that before in my life. But I know that I was saved. No. I know the Lord saved me. Because I couldn't save myself. I was lost. I, I tried a lot of different things. There wasn't nothing that would work. I thought it was too late. But I hearkened unto him. When he said, come unto me, and I will give you rest. The devil said he's not talking to you. The Lord said, I am talking to you. And he saved me that night. Right over there, I dropped the river. I come to this all over. It didn't happen again. It happened over there. It happened over there, I believe, because of what happened here. I heard the word preached. It just took me that long. The Lord could save me here that night. He could save me just like that. But I had to get out of the way. I had a heart. Amen. I had to get rid of myself. Amen. I had to surrender myself to get myself going right down all I can. That's the way I can live. Everybody prays a certain way. But the way I pray that night, I said, Lord, I'm on my way to hell. And if you don't save me, that's where I'm going. But if you'll save me, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. Burden lifted. There's a lot of things happened that night. I can tell you, you probably wouldn't even believe me. So I'll let that go to All I'm going to tell you is, the Lord saved my soul. Amen. Amen. He showed me things that he never had. I needed to see him because of the person that I am. I believe he deals with people different. I don't know how he dealt with you. And if you're here tonight and you're lost, I ain't sure how he's dealing with you. But I know one thing, if he's calling, if he's knocking on your heart, you need to open up to him. Amen. Because that is a precious gift. Amen. And there's no better time to be saved than right now. Amen. Amen. As we stand and get a song.